there will be times when the destroyer must support the helicopter in an emergency rescue procedure known as the parachute pickup. The entire parachute being lifted from the water with the pilot dangling from the other end. The helicopter hovers over the pilot's deployed parachute. The rescue seat is let out for use as a grapnel to hook into the parachute shroud lines. The seat is hooked to the parachute and is lifted from the water, and with it come the parachute and the pilot. If the carrier is not close by, the helicopter pilot may choose to lower him to the fantail of the destroyer. The pilot, lowered to the fantail, still attached to his chute, is held firmly to prevent further injury. The canopy is hauled in fast and held taut by several men. It's very important that the parachute not be detached from the pilot first, because a freed parachute could billow up into the helicopter's main rotor blades and cause it to crash on the fantail. After the parachute is in, the rescue seat is unhooked from the hoist cable, freeing the chute from the helicopter. If the rescue seat cannot be unhooked, the hoist cable must be cut with cable cutters. Parachute pickup, used only in extreme emergency, ends with the rescued pilot safely on deck. Whatever the method of pilot rescue, by helicopter, by motor whaleboat, by ship alongside, the ultimate success of the Navy's sea rescue mission, rescue of pilots from the sea, depends on men on men who can rise to instant action in time of rescue emergency because they have been well trained in rescue procedures and techniques. Know your rescue job. Do your job well. A man's life may be in your hands.